is currently December 2023 as of the time of this video and that means that we are celebrating December. So maybe you haven't uh, set up DOS emulation at all and you want to relive some of those old memories of playing DOS games. Well, this video is going to help you out. What we're going to be looking at is a project called DOSBox Staging. Now, if you've done any research, you'll probably find that there's an actual program called DOSBox, and there's DOSBox X, there's DOSBox Pure, there's loads of different versions. But I've been playing around with this version called DOSBox Staging, which is uh, regularly updated. It's currently on version uh, 0.80.1. Uh, there's a new version coming out soon, hopefully with a whole ton of new features that I'm really excited for. But um, yeah, I've been playing around with this and I thought, yeah, let's do a video and show you how to uh, set up DOSBox. So yeah, go to this website, click on uh, Windows and then download the 64-bit installer. I've done that already, so I've got it on the desktop here. We go run that now. I'm just going to install it for me only and then do next 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 it's going to save it into this path here under your local programs then we'll go next and then install doesn't take too long to install there we go all done and then it actually opens up dosbox for us so we've got a window that's basically a dos machine and we can run uh, dos games dos programs even a little bit of uh, windows 3.1 if you want as well now importantly if you'll see here that it's got writing config file and then a path to a config file this config file is going to be pretty important because we're going to be editing this and tweaking the setup a little bit okay now this is all kind of config and text driven um, it's dos so if you're not really comfortable with command line and typing in commands then really I don't know why you're looking at DOS anyway. I've got a link to that folder here on the desktop and basically it's your username, app data, local and then DOS box and you'll see a similar structure to this. You've got a config file, you've got a sound fonts file, MT32 that's Roland um, and then any shaders as well. We won't be getting into shaders, but we're just going to be doing um, basic stuff really today. So there, really, so, well, you know, so the emulator's running. Uh, if I do C uh, colon, it says, oh, C drive doesn't exist. Now, the next thing you're probably going to be asking is, where do I download loads of DOS uh, games? Well, Google is your friend. Now, there are going to be games out there that are still protected, uh, but My Abandonware is a good website that I've used in the past. Just Googling uh, DOS games will give you a lot of results, um, and there's a lot of sites out there to, to find DOS games. So you've probably got a collection of games somewhere already. So what I recommend doing is uh, making a folder on your C drive. I've called mine DOS, and then I've got a, a set of folders of, of uh, DOS games in there. So I've got Tomb Raider in there, I've got Jazz Jack maybe. Okay, we'll get on to some of the others in a bit. So how do we get uh, this folder to be our C drive in DOS box. Well, simple. We type in the word mount and then C because I want to make it my C drive and then we give it the path. So C slash DOS. That's where this folder exists. So have all your games in there and everything ready and then run this command. There we go. So it's mounted. So if I type C colon now and then I type in DIR, you'll see that this matches up with the file structure here in my Windows 11 machine. Brilliant. Okay, so let's run, for example, Jazz Jack Rabbit. So I can do tab to autocomplete. Uh, I can do dir um, asterisk.exe to list just all the executables. That's quite a handy little command that I used to use back in the day. So for this, I don't need to run setup. Now, a lot of the DOS programs would have a setup program so that you could set up your sound card and things like that because there was a whole mixture of sound cards in the DOS era 
that sort of like had different addresses and IRQs. DOSBox uses is pretty standard addresses and IRQs, so you shouldn't really need to change anything. If you do have a game that is being a bit fussy, then you have to run the setup and, and set up all the sound card and everything. But hopefully, things should just be automatic. I know with Jazz Jabber, right, but it is. So let's run it. by Epic Games. Yes, the same Epic Games. And it's the Christmas edition as well because it's Christmas time. I'm going to go on easy. So as you can see the playbacks are pretty smooth. Um, That's how to run a DOS game, and a lot of games will hopefully be like that, as easy as that. So CD dot dot to go back and list the directories again. So for example, I've got uh, uh, I think this is Super Stardust. I'm pretty sure this is Super Stardust. Type in demo. Yes, the Super Stardust demo. Okay, this one is asking to detect the. Uh, card, yep, it's an S3 that is emulated. So run the test, yep, that works. Press enter, uh, yep, it's flicker free, and then let's start. Now, I remember playing this on the Amiga, but. Uh, is pretty good in DOS as well. Graphics might be a little bit better. So I'm going to make a few changes to the config file. So remember we're going to go into that config file um, and I'm going to right click on it, I'm going to use Notepad++ to make some changes to it. And then if we scroll all the way up to the top, now I know this will look really intimidating, but do not worry, um, everything is explained as well. A lot of this is comments um, really on what each command does. Now, uh, the first bit we're going to look at is kind of where it says full screen. If you want to run DOSBox in full screen and get that whole experience of you running a DOS machine and no windows at all, uh, then you'd set that to true. Uh, for the demo, I'm just going to keep it on windowed. And then you've got things uh, like output. Now, um, if we scroll up a little bit at the top here, it explains output here. Now there's loads of different types of output that we can do. So the default is OpenGL, but I'd like to change it to OpenGL PP, which is pixel perfect. So what that's going to do is that's going to use int uh, integer scaling and everything. It's just going to make sure that all those pixels are looking really nice and you get a really nice um, display. So that is the first change that we're going to do. So we're going to save that, exit out, if we open up DOSBox again, you'll see that the window looks slightly different and yeah, things should look a little bit sharper. So I haven't got my C drive again, I have to mount that again. And actually I'll tell you how you can automatically set it up so every time it mounts that folder. So let's exit out of, of that for the moment, go back into our config file go back into notepad, scroll all the way down to the bottom and you've got your auto exec area. So this is an area where you can run commands on the startup. So this is where we put our mount command. So I'll do mount C and then I'm going to do C slash DOS 
and then to finish it off I'm actually then going to do C so it goes into the directory for me so just two lines just like that okay close that down open up DOSBox again then you'll see there we go we're in the C directory nice and quick okay so if I go into Tomb Raider now and then run Tomb Raider you'll see some things change so the resolution changed uh, because we're using Pixel Perfect, uh, it's using interscaling, so the actual resolution of the screen changed just then. So it's making sure it's still nice and sharp. If I start a new game, we'll see another resolution change. There we go. And this is a nice, clear Pixel Perfect um, copy of Tomb Raider. I must say this is running much smoother than the machine that I originally played Tomb Raider on so it's nice to see now you're probably thinking oh I want 3D FX graphics on this well at the moment um, it doesn't have 3D uh, FX uh, capabilities but I know in 0.81 uh, version they're going to be introducing 3D FX graphics so that's going to be something really interesting to see so let's jump back out of Tomb Raider. I just wanted to show you a range of, of games that are playable in this. So next we're going to look at sound fonts. So we're still in this folder where the config file is. Um, now sound fonts is all to do with MIDI. Uh, if we've got a lot of games that use MIDI, and a lot of them did, um, we want some nice sounds. Now, I recommend going to a website uh, called uh, Phil's Computer Lab. It's actually, he's got a brilliant YouTube channel that I recommend checking out as well. But on his website, he's got under software, audio software, general MIDI and sound fonts. So if we go to this page, he lists a couple of recommended uh, general MIDI sound fonts to try out. So I've downloaded this one, Weeds uh, GM3.SF2. So I've downloaded that and I've put that into my uh, sound fonts folder that we've got in there. Yeah, okay. So we go back into, actually, I'm going to get the name of that, copy that into the clipboard. And then go, go back into my DOSBox staging. Uh, let's scroll up and what we're looking for is a MIDI section. So we've got joysticks. PC sound speakers, we're probably going to be getting there soon. Uh, sound blaster, and then here we go. Yes, so we are looking for a fluid synth. So, so fluid synth manages all the sound fonts for the emulator, and sound font here is just called default.sf2. So let's change that. Let's put in the name of that sound font that we want, save it, and there we go. We've now changed how MIDI sounds in the game. So the next thing is you've probably got some games uh, that were on CD. I know that I've still got a lot of DOS CD games. Now what I recommend is that you uh, convert those to ISO files. So I've uh, converted my X-Wing CD Alliance that I've got and my uh, Day of the Tentacle ISO that I've got and I've put them into a folder called DOS CD on the C drive again. So how do we get CDs into DOSBox? Well, that's pretty easy, and again, that's with another command. So let's open up DOSBox. Then I'll go type in IMG mount. It's a slightly different command. We will use D as the CD drive, and then we need to point it to the path of the ISO. So I'm going to choose X-Wing, ISO, then dash T for the type to say that it's a CD-ROM that we're putting in. Press Enter. There we go. Drive D is mounted. We've got a CD in there now. So I can do DIR, list the executables, and then we've got install. I think I've installed this already, but we'll do it again. Okay, and then what you'd do is you'd say install required files on the hard drive, choose your hard drive, 
make sure to mount the hard drive first if you haven't put that auto exec command in. Um, but then you've got things like set to soundboard configuration, so we can go through that. Set the machine speed if we want. And then once that's all set up, choose yes, uh, say no to reading the manual. I'll go into my C drive and then into my X Wing CD. Uh, I'm looking for, I think it's B Wing. This is a brilliant game. Uh, if you're a Star Wars fan at all, this is one of the best uh, Star Wars games, I think. The menu system was fantastic. But yeah, I could play that for hours. Uh, but I'm just showing you basically a, a CD game. That's worked perfectly fine. So yeah, convert it to ISO. And then you can easily get into DOSBox. So the other CD that I've got is uh, Day of the Tentacle. Now, Day of the Tentacle uh, leveraged uh, the Roland MT32 um, device, which was a uh, sound card uh, that was used a lot for musicians, but it also gain popularity in DOS gaming as well. So what we need to do in that, if we go to that config folder again where our config file is and our sound fonts, you'll see a folder called mt32-roms. Now somewhere on the internet, if you typed in uh, the name of this file, you might find it. I can't tell you where to find it, but I've given you a clue of what type of file you're looking for. Once that's in there, uh, you can then start running uh, Roland M32 sound. So if we go into uh, DOSBox again, if I do image mount D, and then let's choose uh, DOS CD, I called it uh, DOTT, Day of the Tentacle, ISO, and the type of it is a CD ROM. And then if I go into DOTT folder, I want to run Tentacle. Now I think this is just using the basic sound fonts and everything. So, uh, okay, we'll spread out commando stuff. And then F5 to quit. Yes, it's a brilliant game. Day of the Tentacle. If you've not played it before, so, uh, I might need to go into the setup for this. So where's the setup? I think it's a bit further back. Yeah, if I just run DOTT, there we go. So change configuration. So I'm running, there we go, I'm running the Roland sounds. Fantastic, yes. And then Day of the Tentacle. And if we listen again, There we go. We're using the Roland sound count, uh, the Roland M32 now. Brilliant. So, if we exit out of that, that's an example of an M32 running. So DOSBox is definitely worth checking out and I'm looking forward to uh, the newer versions of, of it. So you've got 3D FX graphics, um, there's going to be some sort of like uh, 
CRT scaling as well. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in another one.